Hello, everyone. Welcome to Craftsy Live. I'm Robin Miller, and I'm really excited to be with you here today. I hope some of you got a little bit of the eclipse yesterday. When I was promoting this event, I was saying, you know, it's going to be, yes, the eclipse is going to be so yesterday because today is time for chess pie. Um, I usually don't do baking when I do my live events with you guys, but so I thought this would be super fun to tie in because Craftsy has so many amazing baking classes um, and recipes. I thought it'd be fun to throw one of mine into the ring with all of the other pro baking recipes. So um, chess pie. So that's why I'm going to do it today. I'm going to show you the steps of how to do it. Um, it's easy, but there are some waiting times. So it's one of those uh, recipes that you want to plan ahead to make. Um, and it's great for summer because it can be served chilled. And I love it chilled because it's kind of like um, the, it, a chess pie. Well, I'll give you a little bit of the background. So it's a southern dessert. Typically eggs, sugar, butter, very simple, um, a classic Southern dish, really easy to make. And there are two uh, rumors of how it got its name. The first one is that someone uh, made a, they called it a chest pie because it takes pretty much everything out of your pantry, the sugar, the butter, the eggs. Um, and with the Southern accent, it came out chest pie. And the other theory is that someone said, ah, it's just pie because it's a simple pie. Um, and with the Southern accent, it came out to be chest pie. So no matter how we got the name, I kind of did a little tweak on it. I'm not the only one to make a chocolate chest pie, um, but mine I think is foolproof and just ultra chocolatey because I'm using two different types of chocolate. So I will show you the steps of how to make it. I have a screen here that I can see if you write in questions or comments, we can make this um, back and forth. We'll have fun with this. That's why I do live so that we can have a conversation as I go along. So it's like you're in my kitchen with me. That's my favorite way to cook now that I'm empty nester. So you're in my kitchen. Feel free to um, ask questions or if you've ever made this or if your family has or if it reminds you of something. So feel free. And you can ask questions about other things too. I have a lot of new content on Craftsy. If you have any questions there, throw it out there. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm so excited. <laughs> First thing we're going to do is, is the crust. And I cheated a little bit with a store-bought crust, which I have no problem doing. There are some great, <coughs> I have the oven going. I have some great, um, like these, like Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, they have their own like store-bought brands and, and Pillsbury too. This is like a classic Pillsbury crust. So I took it out of the fridge so it wasn't really cold because when the crust is really cold, it cracks when you do this. So you take your store-bought crust, if you want to make a homemade crust, I have a lot of those on my website. Um, anywhere I have a pie, like my apple pie has a homemade crust. But um, we're going for easy and um, equally delicious, even when you're working with uh, store-bought products. So, okay. So I have, oh, let me show you this pie plate. So I brought my son uh, a pie to college. Many of you know that I bring him food every week. I haven't gotten that pie plate back in like a year. And I asked for it last week and he said, I don't know where it is. So I found this one on Amazon and it came in a two pack. Uh, I love it. It's pretty and it's got the fluted edge. So it makes the decorative edge like it, the pie pan does all the work for you. So it's a nine inch plate. Uh, let me see if you can see my hands. Yes, you can. So the way that you uh, make a decorative edge is, I, I, you know, you just pinch around the edges. So you pick one finger with the dough and the and then two fingers to pinch it. You maybe have all seen this before in other baking classes. Um, and the other way that you could just go around the edge with a fork to make that fluted edge, that's equally pretty. Uh, Heather there, I love this pie. I had it once when I was a kid, never knew the name of it and never had it again, but it always stuck with me. I'm excited to see it made. I hope it is what I remember. That's awesome. And I hope it is too, Heather, because um, as I said, the classic chess pie is not chocolate, but maybe you had a chocolate one, I don't know. But I stuck with the classic ingredients. There's nothing weird in here. I added a hint of espresso, but you really can't taste it. It just kind of catapults the chocolate flavor and you can leave that out. Um, and that's what, like when you get something that's mocha, if you notice you kind of, it's not like a coffee taste. It's really just a catapulted deeper chocolate flavor. And that's uh, what we're going for here. We're only using a teaspoon. So I'm gonna go around the edge here and make it pretty. I was thinking about bringing this pie also to my son and his roommates in college, but I like this pie plate. I'm not sure I would get it back. <laughs> so to think about that, maybe I'll take it out. Maybe I'll cut slices out and just bring him pre-sliced pie and I can keep my new pie plate. Okay. I'm 
kind of a, you know, it's funny. I'm like, uh, I go around and around just to make sure it's perfect. Cause I feel like with a pie, the decorative edge is like the first thing that people notice. Call me silly. All right. So we got that. And then what you want to do. So in the recipe, um, I tell you to partially bake the pie and then uh, prick the bottom with a fork. You can follow the recipe as is, or um, you can prick the bottom of the crust with a fork now, because we are going to weight this with pie weights. So you can do it either way. I'm doing it now um, because that way it's done. And the reason you prick the bottom of a pie crust is so that it doesn't puff up and rise, even though we're baking it blind, which is with weights and, and not a filling. That's why it's called blind. Um, it's like an extra measure of uh, caution. It's like it makes sure that it doesn't rise at all. So we've got that done. And what I'm going to do is, so you take a piece of parchment paper. I fold it in half so it's double. Put that right in the center. We have Kashmiri says, hello, I am from India. Hello, Kashmiri. I'm going to India this summer. I'm excited. Uh, Carolyn says, please tell us where to get those pie plates that you're using. I got on Amazon, literally, and it was a two pack and they were not expensive. Just type in nine inch pie plate, white fluted edge. Cause I'm not getting, or I can put it on my uh, Amazon shop. I do have like a front page. I don't add enough stuff there, but I'll do that after today, after the live, I'll make sure I add that to my homepage so you can have the link. Exactly. Isn't that pretty? I love it so much. It just, it's like, the plate makes like half the battle of it being pretty is done. Uh, Becky, hi from Spokane and hi from Pennsylvania. I love when they're from all over the world and all over the country. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I have um, an egg white. So this recipe calls for three eggs and you use two whole eggs and a yolk in the filling and you use the white just around the edges of your pie crust. And what this does is it makes it the edge shiny. You don't have to do it, but if you've ever seen the difference between like a shiny edged pie and a dull edge pie, this is why. We had to do this little egg wash. We're still good with the questions. So I'm excited. Um, yeah, I was just talking to somebody about uh, my trip to India. It's not booked yet because I'm still trying to figure it out, but my son is going to be there um, this summer and I'm going to go visit him. So I'm excited to see your country. Alrighty, just the edge, because we're gonna fill the pie, so you don't need to make it glossy anywhere else. Okay, here's another thing I found on Amazon, because pie weights, you can use dried beans, rice, um, use all those things, but I thought, you know what, I, sh I make a lot of pie, I should have like official pie weights. So that's what these are. Whoops, there goes. <laughs> Did you ever play that game? What's it called? You put the ball in at the top and it goes, is it Planko? That's what it kind of sounded like. And it landed in a bowl in my island. That's that's awesome. I have to see what the prize was under my, my island. Okay, so these are just uh, pie weights. And what's great about them is it's the perfect amount for a nine inch pie. And it's the perfect amount of weight. So you just pour them in there. And then after you finish baking, you just dump them back in the container and save them for your next pie. So that's what, if I tilt it, See how they are, the weights, it's great. And they were, it's also Amazon, I can link to those too because they were very inexpensive. I can't remember how much they were, but about the price of a bag of beans, that's what I was thinking, but I can keep reusing them and reusing them, so. Um, okay, so this is ready to go, oh wait, no, it's not ready to go to the oven. It goes to the refrigerator for 30 minutes. This also helps ensure that the, the dough doesn't rise. So that's why I said this is an easy recipe, but. Give yourself some time to do these steps and let things cool. So this goes into the refrigerator for 30 minutes. Then uh, while that's in the fridge, you can preheat your oven. And then you cook the pie with the weights at 375 degrees for 15 minutes. Then you take these weights out. And in the recipe that you'll see um, as part of this live, I tell you then to prick. This is the second time you can prick if you didn't do it first. Prick the bottom and the sides of the dough. And then it goes back in for five minutes. And I'll show you what it looks like. So that goes in until it's golden brown and fabulous, like this one. Here's the second of the two pie plates I got in that thing. So the edges are golden, it didn't rise. 
it's perfect. And I also wanted to do this in advance because it needs to cool before you put the filling in it. So that's been cooling and then I can show you the filling. Do we have uh, Little Baking Mama says, this is my favorite pie. Awesome. I'm wondering, Little Baking Mama, if you do the chocolate one or if you do the classic chest pie that's uh, just really white eggs, butter, sugar. Um, I was reading, when I was thinking about what I wanted to talk to you about, I was reading that there, somebody said, what's the difference between chest pie and buttermilk pie? Um, it's the buttermilk. So here, there, sometimes there's milk. I use heavy cream in my filling. Sometimes there's milk but um, not buttermilk, because buttermilk adds tang. It's a different pie altogether. Uh, hello, Maya, I think I can read that, from California. And I think that says moles. Uh, love a good pie crust, yum, I know. And I do feel a little guilty for cheating, but not that much, because I do it all the time. I love the um, store-bought crusts. They've come a long way from the days where they were dry and bland. Uh, so I always have the, a two-pack in my freezer, always, right now, I do. Okay, so now I'm gonna make the filling. And as I mentioned, there's a total of three eggs. We already used the white. So we've got the leftover yolk from that first uh, egg. So we're not wasting anything here. And when I um, write recipes, I always suggest that you use large eggs. That way the measurements are consistent with the way I did it. So. Um, if you can use large eggs, that'll be what I used. And then you'll know that your filling is, the measurements are all correct. Uh, yep, got, I'm caught up on my questions, but you can keep them coming. You can keep comments coming too. All right, let's get the other two, two eggs in there. And you know, sometimes recipes will say, um, have your ingredients at room temperature. You don't have to, this is, that's important with things. You know, I, I did a whole chocolate chip cookie story last week room temperature eggs, room temperature butter, um, because those ingredients blend better when they're room temperature. So say you're whisking or you're using your uh, electric mixer for the butter sugar when you're beginning to do cookies and, and scones and things like that. That's why it's important to have room temperature ingredients so they blend better and, and they aerate so that the sugar can get into the butter and aerate. It's not needed here, it's gonna blend just fine. All right, three eggs, I'm gonna give that a head start whisk get some fluff to it nothing crazy you don't need a stand mixer for this recipe then we've got a cup of granulated sugar we'll get that mixed in there so um since i've been writing more baking stories lately i try to delve a little bit deeper and give people alternatives so um, for chest pie, you can use just regular granulated sugar. Um, I've been kind of excited about some of these unrefined sugars. It's granulated sugar, but it's unrefined. So it's got like a, it's not quite bright white, um, but it's still granulated sugar. So um, any of those things work here. You do need a cup though, no matter what you use. Brown sugar, I wouldn't do it. I think it would make um, it too gummy, I think, or too gooey. This is a gooey pie. It's kind of like a slightly undercooked brownie or like brownie meets fudge, um, which is the whole awesomeness of it. Uh, let's see. Did you grease the pie plate? No, I did not. I did not grease the pie plate. Uh, you don't have to with this. A lot, you know, pie crusts are typically a lot of butter, so you shouldn't have to. Shouldn't have to. If you have a pie plate that sticks, like, historically, um, certainly you can um, just give it a quick coating of something, either spray or rub it with butter since there's butter in the crust. We have another question. Little Baking Mama chocolate chest pie, always my go-to, awesome. All right, I hope this is the best one you've ever had or seen, or I hope you wanna make it after you see me make it. Okay, so we've got that whisked in. Now we're gonna add um, unsweetened cocoa and in this recipe, because we're not using leavening agents, you can use Dutch, proce Dutch process or um, you know regular. You can use your favorite, and it can be dark also. So there's you know how there's regular cocoa and there's like special dark now. So because there's no there's not going to be an interaction with any leavening agents, you can use your favorite brand of cocoa. And we need three tablespoons. And we're doing two types of chocolate. And here we've got the cocoa, and then we've got some other fabulous chocolate going in. 
All right, and earlier I mentioned um, espresso. Instant espresso comes in powder form. Um, that's this. So this just gives, um, it's a little bit of a mocha, but you barely taste it. It's just the reason it's added to chocolate dishes is to boost the flavor of the chocolate. Um, you can leave it out. It's not gonna affect anything, um, but I love to have it in there. So just a teaspoon. My whisk. Any other questions for me? Do you think, oh, I just spilled reading the question. Do you think you could use coconut sugar? Yes, I have baked quite a bit with coconut sugar. And I think in a recipe like this, it would work well. I have found um, it, and I say that I say that because it's in like a custard, like an egg base, and that will protect the coconut sugar. I have found in other instances it browns. I don't know if you have noticed that too, but it gets a dark, a darker color, almost like an and like a burned flavor. Um, but yes, in this application, I think coconut sugar would be fine. I have a bag of it here too. Like I mean, I definitely use it, um, and it would be fine in here if you want to replace that. Absolutely. And hopefully you won't get the cocoa all over your counter. That's all right. A messy cook is a happy cook, right? Just shows you've been having some fun. So you're going to get that blended. Bring me those questions. Did I miss any? I don't think so. I think this is a great pie for the season because, um, as I said, you can serve it like room temperature or chilled. And I think, you know, it'd be great for a picnic or a potluck or a book club or um, birthday kids' birthday party, you know, something where you want to make it in advance, have it in the fridge. I like to have it from the fridge because it's like fudge when it gets chilled. All right, we need a couple more ingredients. Just make a, a little clean workspace here for myself. Um, heavy cream. So I mentioned that milk and cream are not always in chest pie, but it works really well in this one. Um, with the other ingredients because we had the unsweetened cocoa um, and we just need a little bit more liquid. So just a quarter of a cup. Have you guys seen the prices of heavy cream? I don't know what it's like in your store, but in my store, the price of heavy cream has gone through the roof. So I got this little, found this little tiny one today for less than $3, which I don't know, like it has typically been like this national brands are like six, $7 for this size. So you want to find like a recipes for it, right? If you're going to spend that much money, but this was 269 or something. So I was very happy about that. So we've got a quarter cup of that just to add a little bit more richness and liquid. We have uh, a question. It's <laughs> Buono, Bueno Puff. Do we have to use the espresso? Absolutely not. Absolutely, you do not need to use the espresso. It is only used as a flavor enhancer to enhance the flavor of the chocolate. Leave it out. You don't want it, or if you don't have it already, leave it out. I've done that many times. I've done. I've seen a recipe for something, and I'm like, oh, I don't have it. The espresso, leave it out. Nobody can tell the difference. It's only if you want that little uh, hint of mocha, and um, but you definitely won't miss it for sure. Can you use Splenda? So. If you're talking about the Splenda that is one-to-one -one baking Splenda, like meant for to replace your sugar, it should work. I haven't done it, but I have, I was spokesperson for Splenda in the past. So I did do a lot of baking with their one-to-one -one, um, Splenda mint to replace sugar in baking. Yes, it should work. It definitely should. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. I did so many recipes with that exact product. Um, so absolutely give it a whirl and let me know because I'm sure it's going to be great. Of course, we are using chocolate, so you're going to have some sugar in this because um, we are using a chocolate bar too. I think I missed a question. Let's see. Uh, how long can you store the pie after baking? Great question. So this is why this is a great kind of uh, pie to do in steps. So you can bake the pie in advance, store it at room temperature for up to 24 hours. You can pop it in the fridge for up to three days. So you can have that ready. You can have the filling ready. You can put everything together and bake right before, well, yeah, but right before or the day before, because you want to let it cool for a minimum of two hours before you cut into it. So you can do a couple days on the crust, a couple days on the filling, and then you need a couple of hours once it's baked. 
um, let me see. Do you usually serve it with whipped cream or could, um, or could you use coconut cream instead of the heavy cream in the pot? Coconut cream, I think would be amazing. I think that would be really good. So if you mean coconut cream, not cream of coconut, because while well, cream of coconut, I have a pan right there, I'm doing a pina colada story. So cream of coconut is the one that has sweeteners in it. So I think coconut cream would be perfect. I actually think that would be great. And you know, there are coconut based whipped creams on the market now. So you could, if you're trying to get rid of the dairy and there's a little butter, um, absolutely you get a coconut based whipped cream or leave the whipped cream off. I do have whipped cream. I actually cheat, I have it under here and it's the, uh, the one that you go, that one. Um, so, but yes, you could use coconut cream in here and leave the whipped cream off if you're avoiding tons of dairy. What else, did I miss anything? Espresso, Splenda. If I missed your question, um, say it again so it comes like to the bottom of my list. All right, what did I miss? Vanilla. So another product that I love, so pure vanilla extract has far superior flavor than imitation vanilla. Yes, it's more expensive, but it lasts forever. I mean, I get this big thing, it'll last me for a while. Um, I'm gonna use a teaspoon and a half. That's one. Um, in the pantry, another product I get online because in the grocery store, I can't seem to find, I only can find like the same, same old ones and I like to have a lot on hand. And it's not super expensive. I think that was 25 or $30, which might sound a lot, this is huge. And in the store, it might be like $9 for that little tiny one ounce one. So, oh, the aroma, fabulous. For those of you that love vanilla um, paste, vanilla bean paste, that works too. Uh, substitute that right in there. What did I forget? Oh, I know what I forgot. Okay. So the last thing that goes in is something that I already prepped ahead. I'm all caught up. So in this bowl, I had cooling a blend. I'm just going to stir it up so you can see. So what this is, is four tablespoons of cut up butter. And when I'm doing rich desserts, I love to use the European higher fat butter. It just super creamy melts in your mouth like butter because it is, but it's actually superior for baking. I do love it. So this is unsweetened Plugra European butter. Um, if you're going to use salted, leave the salt out, which I still have to add. Um, and the other reason, here's a tip. You may or may not know this already, but I love unsalted butter just because it's usually fresher. So salt is used as a preservative. Um, so when you're buying unsalted, you know that the, uh, it's probably um, fresher, a fresher product. So that's that. And I melted four tablespoons of the Plugra with two ounces of this chocolate. So that's half of this bar broke it up, put it in a bowl, put it with the butter, and you can do it in a double boiler over simmering water, in a bowl, in a saucepan of simmering water, or in the microwave, checking every 20 seconds, okay? And then you wanna let it cool because you don't wanna cook the eggs. So you let it cool, and then you add it. It's the last thing we do, and we'll add some salt. But it's the last thing we do, we add this wonderful butter chocolate mixture. So there's where your second chocolate comes in. We have the cocoa, we have the Ghirardelli, but any um, chocolate that you find in the baking aisle, I mean, Baker's has a, um, a semi-sweet, you can use uh, dark or bittersweet. So you can really make this as uh, bittersweet as you want, depending on this bar of chocolate and the cocoa that you use. So, okay, alrighty, let's get this a nice mix. And then salt, which as you've probably heard and know, you add salt to baked good sweet things to balance the sweetness and to bring out the chocolate flavor. Just a quarter teaspoon. Let's see, hello from France, Karin. Hello from France. Did I miss a question? You can use coconut cream, hello from France. WC asks, is that dark chocolate? So semi-sweet. So you can use semi-sweet, you can use bittersweet, and it doesn't have to be Ghirardelli. It can be Baker's or your favorite chocolate bar. Um, you just need two ounces of chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate. Now, I wouldn't do milk chocolate because we're going for a dark uh, chess pie here, but really you can use whatever. I just bought that in 
the baking aisle, it was right next to the bakers. That's where that you sell it, where they sell the chocolate chips and all the other things. All right, so there we have our filling. Gorgeous. And we have our cooled pie crust, which I did earlier today, so it would cool, be nice and cool before um, baking. Pour that in there. Weren't for the raw eggs, wouldn't it be amazing to just like eat this right out of the bowl? I make, sometimes I make um, my chocolate chip cookies with those pasteurized egg whites, you know, from the grocery store. And then my boys can eat the, the batter, the dough, the cookie dough, because it's pasteurized egg whites. There's no raw, of course, some would say you can't have the raw flour, but been doing it for years. That's perfect amount. So the thing with chest pie is it doesn't, it's like, it's a rustic looking pie, the, the top cracks and it's supposed to, it's crackly. It's like crackly on top, fudgy in the middle. And this was the, uh, this is the perfect amount of filling for a nine inch, a nine inch crust. Let's see if there's a question there. I didn't know about salted versus unsalted butter. Oh yeah. And so I'm starting to try to tell people more about that, the salt used as a preservative thing, because that's not the only, you know, unsalted versus salted is not just a flavor thing. So when I have the option, I always buy unsalted and then way you also can control the amount of salt in your food, especially your baked goods. Okay. So the oven is, uh, so it was 375 for the pie crust. When you take the pie crust out, you turn the oven temperature down to 325 because this is kind of like a uh, custard. So it's a low and slow bake. So you put it in the oven for 45 to 50 minutes until it's not jiggling. So what you go and you um, shake the pan like this when it's in the oven and if it's no longer jiggling, then you know it's ready. Of course I have one finished. Um, so I'll put this, I'll hide this. I'll move it over here. I have an idea. I'll make room. Um, and uh, as it cools, it firms up. But again, the top could be crackly, should be crackly. Here's my finished one. It's coming. See, this is before I got those cool white pie plates from Amazon. But I wanted to take a slice out so you could see that fudgy filling. Can you see that in there? <laughs> see the crackly top, the fudge-like filling. Does this look like, those of you who have had it before, does this look like the chest pies that you have made with a nice crackly top? See that? I'm gonna just take a, like, I wanna take a fork. Oh, I wish you could see that. Look at how you crackle, you go into the crackly crust and you have this like fudge-like. So what I like to do is, let's put that back. What I like to do is, again, either make my own whipped cream, which I've done. I always spike with a little bit of vanilla extract or I cheat. And I either um, do individual slices with whipped cream or I will just do the whole pie in like, so like, you know, then you can always add more to someone's individual serving. So there, chocolate, I really, like it's so funny that I took the slice out, but I really wanted you to see how fudgy it was in the middle. And gooey, it's like glossy. And then, um, so after two hours, it's ready to serve. And at that point, it's going to be room temperature. But if you want to serve it chilled or if you want to bring it to a party, then pop it in the fridge, get it nice and cool, and it will firm up like delicious fudge. Um, let's see what your questions are for me. Oh, got the butter. Um, what's the oven temp? Okay. For the pie itself with the filling in it, it's 325 degrees Fahrenheit. For the crust, 375. So you bake the crust the crust out, lower the oven temperature, or turn it off while the pie crust cools. And then when you're ready to make the pie, it should be 325. And here's another tip I just thought of. Um, if you want, and I do this a lot these days, because if you don't know the quality of your pie plate, bake on a baking sheet. It's just, it's nothing to clean. You just put the pie on a baking sheet, put it in the oven. Um, I kind of am getting into the habit of doing that, especially this won't bubble over and spill, but 
the ones that do, you know, it's a pain. It's all in the bottom of your oven. So um, that is kind of my new go-to. So if that, and also um, for not like this pie, cause you want the top to crackle this pie, but it does prevent cracking of other things like cheesecake um, and other pies that you don't want necessarily to crack on top. Uh, oh, WC, it says it looks delicious. Thank you. I'm so glad you could like, cause you know, it's hard for me to see what you can see, but I hope you can imagine like my mouth's watering, like the fudginess of it. It's like biting into a super fudgy brownie that married a piece of fudge like that is and it's just the flavor is so great uh, charlotte asks um you know it's done when it's not jiggly so not the clean toothpick trick like a cake correct because the toothpick will come out it won't come out wet but it might come out fudgy looking which is fine so the jiggle trick in 45 to 50 minutes um is perfect and here's the other thing too with this pie you kind of can't overcook it so if you get 45 minutes and you're like, I don't know, is it jiggling? I can't tell. Give it five more minutes. This, this is, is, is super safe um, to add five minutes with a pie like this. It's not like cupcakes or cakes where they super dry out. We've got heavy cream. We've got butter. We've got full fat chocolate in there and three eggs. So um, you've got those to protect the pie. So if it, you're in doubt, just keep check, just do the five minutes, go to the 50 and then check every two to three minutes after that. But for me, um, I believe it was 45 minutes for me, my oven, but again, all ovens are different. So I always start checking at the lowest of the range and then every five minutes after that. Uh, yeah. Oh, Terry says, I prefer a clear. Oh, you prefer this one to the white? Oh, I guess that's, uh, and the one that my son stole is blue, like blue clear. It's Pyrex. It's like a, it's like this, but in blue. So that's interesting. I, that's everybody to each his own. And you know, there's the silver ones too. Um, but yeah, that's good. Then I'm glad I had a clear one here. <laughs> uh, Becky says, Lily's has sugar-free chocolate chips and different flavored chips like mint. So you could, so you're thinking you might, if you're gonna use the Splenda, if this is the state going along the Splenda theme to make this more sugar-free, Sugar-free, semi-sweet chips, two ounces worth, and um, the sugar substitute in the equal amount of one cup. That should work. I mean, this isn't a diet pie, but if you're if you're trying to cut sugar, that is that is those are two great ways to make sure that you do that. That's a good idea. Yeah, there's so much, and there's vegan. There's all kinds of different products out there that are delicious and well made these days. Um, WC says, I believe Kerrygold butter is considered high fat. Have you heard of it? Yes, Kerrygold um, is considered high fat. It's, all, it's an Irish butter, and this is considered a European style butter, which are um, similar. But when it comes to baking, I, I kind of go with um, the European style. I can't remember, because I, I did a story a long time ago about Kerrygold versus Plugra versus like your regular, you know, Land O'Lakes, like your regular butter. And I can't remember what the difference in fat content was between Kerrygold and Pluger, but they're right next to each other at the grocery store if you want to flip it over and look. Um, and again, unsalted, so you get the freshest. Um, but yeah, if you already have the Kerrygold, you could use that. And again, you could use regular butter. This is just a little tip, one of my you know, tips of the day um, about the butter. Because I'm doing, you know, again, I'm doing a lot more baking and i um, caring more about each specific ingredient because we, you know, it delivers, it's going to deliver a part of the dish. So the butter, the vanilla that I mentioned, good quality chocolate, if you have it, you know, and here I used a store bought crust and canned whipped cream. So there you go. Like I had, it's like, it's a balance of being a little bit snobby in some areas and, you know, where it does, where, where the flavor isn't going to be compromised, you can cheat as well. Um, Deb says, could you add nuts to this? I think they would sink to be honest, because the bat, as you go, like, if you think about it, so what I would do, I would sprinkle the top. So I would keep the pie the same and then do the whipped cream and then sprinkle the top with toasted walnuts or um, pistachios or something like that. I think that would be better than adding the nuts because they will sink to the bottom. The batter's too thin. But if you want that nutty crunch, I think that would be the way to go and make a really pretty garnish, but just toast the nuts first. So it brings out um, more flavor. It's definitely in a dry skillet, two to three minutes over low heat, um, shaking the pan frequently so that they, um, they don't burn. That would be great.
great idea. I love that. Uh, Becky says, I think I'm going to have to make this. Oh, well, I hope you do. That's the whole point. This will be the third time I've made this in a month. Um, and the, once I we sign off and I bake this one, I'm going to bring it to a track meet on Friday <laughs> with a whole bunch of forks for the team because it's really it's a crowd pleaser. Um, and every you know everybody loves it, kids, adults. And again, there are like kind of many ways to serve it. So you can garnish it or not. You can serve it like a brownie. It's super easy. But I am going to do the slices, I think, so I get my pie plate back. <laughs> you have any other questions for me or comments? Or um, I'll remind you that I have two or three new classes on Craftsy. There's a skillet one. There's one with um, produce, uh, making you know your produce come alive. I just two weeks ago filmed another class and a whole bunch of recipes um, for Craftsy. And it was a brunch class. So that's going to be super fun because I've never really made a, had a theme like that. And we had so much fun shooting that and um, thinking about how awesome brunch is, right? I mean, it's like always a party. This is always a, a fun experience, whether it's um, game day or a bridal shower, baby shower, whatever. So I just did that. That's not live yet, but um, it's coming. Uh, Let's see. And no, so there's no more questions. All right. So you guys, the recipe is when the downloadable content, you know where to find me if you need me after this. Um, sometimes the, these lives go to Facebook and YouTube and I go after the class and the next day or so and check for follow up questions. Um, sometimes they are there. And if you need me for anything else, robinmillercooks.com and there's a contact sheet and I always respond. Always, because I always get those and I always respond and hopefully have the answer for anything you're looking for. So robinmillercooks.com. And then I will be looking, if you have any questions after this, um, I'll be checking Facebook and YouTube to follow up with you. So thanks for watching Chocolate Chess Pie. I hope you make it. And uh, I'll see you in May for something super fun for summer. So thanks again. I'll see you later.